man has to give thanks for life. <laughs> yeah, man, let black people. I'm just saying, you're the providers last year, the Almighty Eye. So, give me great pleasure this evening to welcome both of you to the program. We have Nikolai Charles, the producer of the Exodus Roots Rail Line. It's good to have you. And we also have Tabitha, um, your reggae sister. Um, reggae artist right here in Barbados, across the region. You guys obviously would know Tabitha. So, from last year, we would have been obviously diving into the same topics every week. Um, spirituality versus religion, um, economics, entrepreneurship, um, positivity among the youth. Um, I brought you here this evening, obviously, your most recent release, the song War, um, on the Gunman Rhythm. Obviously, yes. everybody's talking about crime and violence in Barbados um, yes. of recent, you know. Um, Nicolay, your line, Exodus. Um, the shirt you have on obviously speaks to the whole vibe, might, strength. Consciousness, love, etc. Those are the things that you're really trying to bring out um, with your clothing link. So I'm going to give you both the chance this evening to obviously express yourselves and take us behind your work. Um, what would have inspired um, the message in your songs, the message behind your clothing line, etc. Um, so we start, ladies first, as always. Tabitha. Yes. What's happening with you? Um, well, my most recent release, the one you were speaking of, War. Mm -hmm. um, this is. Probably a few months now, I had lost one of my friends, um, a youngster that I grew up with, to senseless killing, you know, just little block action, shot in the back, dead. You know, so it was a case where I was thinking about it and then I said, you know what, let me write about it and put my feelings on paper. And at that time, so much was happening as well. Like you had a chopping incident, you know, domestic violence incident. And um, that caused me to write a verse. And then the death of my friend caused me to write another verse. And just how things are generally right now in Barbados caused me to write another verse. Mm -hmm. So that's how we got, we got the, the song War. Right, okay, and you're talking obviously um, about the impact, not just as an artist, but you're talking as a citizen of Barbados. This yes. is something that obviously touched you. Yes, correct. All right, All right. Um, Nicolay, um, you have Exodus Roots here. Mm -hmm. um, give me a bit of insight into um, obviously fashion, yes, that's fashion, you, ha you have your colors, etc. But you really put a lot of emphasis um, on symbolism, on the words, um, your artwork. So talk to me a bit about that and what have inspired you. Yeah, well, you know, good night, thanks for having me on the show. Exodus, you know, is a, a brand more leaning towards um, our roots. Um, it's also leaning towards the upliftment of our race. Mm -hmm. Um, we look at the times happening right now in Barbados, um, you know, people finding themselves involved in crime, you know, as what Tabitha was saying, um, you know, they're out on the corners hustling because of the situations that are happening in Barbados. Um, so I have a, a slogan in the name of survival of the fittest, right? As to like uplift uplift people you know even if the person doesn't buy the shirt from me want somebody sees the slogan survival of the fittest you know that would you know give them some sort of encouragement to get up you know and go out there look to do something positive and that's where the brand is really going to send a message to people um leaning towards africa which is our roots um that's that's where I'm carrying the brand right now. Okay, I'm curious. Um, obviously, you, you've been pushing the brand since last year. Uh, you were always part of the program. How receptive are Barbadians? Um, I think Barbadians have a have a high sense of fashion. Um, that's my belief. So, how has it been for you entering the market uh, yeah. of fashion with um, a Barbadian <laughs> brand? You're based here in Barbados. Um, I know you obviously have. Your, your setup on social media, which obviously invites people from overseas to purchase your work as well. Yeah. But here at home. Uh, how receptive have Barbadians been to, you know, that kind of message associated with, obviously, the fashion as well? Right. Um, for me, you know, in the beginning, it was a little tough. You know, I had the, the vision, you know, of creating my own Rootswear brand. Um, obviously, having the knowledge, you know, of certain things that happened in, the his in our history. Um, I find Bajans, you know, pick up on things slowly. Um, I get a lot of feedback from outside, right? Um, a lot of people from Jamaica give me a lot of feedback. 
um, overseas in the States through my social medias. Um, but yeah, I just find right now it's starting to pick up. Um, I'm giving thanks for that. Um, you know, I just like how it's going right now. Tabitha, you're a reggae artist. Um, yes, please. You, you're not just, I suppose, you, you've obviously taken the, the choice to, you know, brand yourself as such. Tabitha, the reggae sister. Um, yes. Reggae is not, I would, I would say, um, indigenous to Barbados. Um, Soka, Calypso, however you want to call it, that's the main thing. We just came on a crop over. Um, so what's your experience been like in terms of the, re the receptivity to your product? Um, it's all connected in the conscious lane in terms of spreading the message. So that's that's fashion. That's his experience. What's your experience, Millie? Um, Well, from the time I could remember, I had been exposed to reggae music mm -hmm. through my mom, mm -hmm. um, who had moved here to Barbados from Germany. Um, my mother was always a reggae fan. Um, Bob Marley, Lucky Dube, Alpha Blondie, Muta Baruka, you know, like you could name it. My mother had a record from them. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with that foundation. And there was something about growing up in a Rastafarian household and the music, what reggae music was back then, it was so instrumental in me actually taking a loving to the actual, the, the genre mm -hmm. and saying, you know what, this is something that can represent who I am and what I want to say and what I have to say and have it reach the world. And um, yeah, from... Since I was a little girl, I loved reggae music. So I just found it natural to have reggae music be my choice of, of genre. Okay. Not to say that I am confined to that reggae space, because mm. I've done R&B before, I've done hip hop, mm. I've done soca. You know, I'm an artist in general and I create. Mm. That's, that's, you know, that's what I do. But reggae always has a special place in my heart. Okay, I know you've done some work in um, Jamaica. Just, just briefly tell me about yes. your experience producing music. Um, what was the big difference going to Jamaica, um, producing down there? Jamaica is, boy, Jamaica is a, a vibe. That's all I can explain it as, a vibe. Um, Barbados is a vibe too, don't get me wrong, huh? But, you know, where Bob Marley from and, you know, just everybody, just the, the, the whole liveliness of the, the atmosphere when it comes to, like, recording and, the thought process that mm. goes into recording a reggae song mm. and the the enthusiasm and the passion and it was well it was amazing to work with some of the producers in Jamaica. There was one in particular, a guy called Kamani, mm. and he is with major label music group. Mm. And that was an experience in itself. Like just good energies all around and I could get what I want. I tell them they understand it and they put it into this wonderful creation, which I would call my baby mm -hmm. at the end of the, the, the trip. So it was it was really well worth okay, and coming back, my time. Coming back home, are you um are you satisfied with the amount of opportunities that are currently available um for you for you artists to showcase your talents? Um no, which is why I commend um the producers of the Bajan Green Reggae Roadshow, mm -hmm. which is coming up um, in September. It gives the artists who would not usually be performing outside of any kind of festival or whatever. Right. It gives them a platform to say what they need to say. Mm -hmm. um, I think more initiatives of this sort can be done with proper funding and everything, you know, with... Barbados supporting the artists and really pushing it to, to that next level. I think there is nothing that can stop us from being as great as we need to be. Okay. So it's just really right now at this point, a case where we need to have that backative, so to speak, to get the music to the next level. Are you, are you my, my, my final question on the music though, um, the song, the song of, of, of Barbadian music, um, Reggae music is an international genre of music. Um, so once you enter the art form, um, you're not just representing, I suppose, you're not just a Bajan reggae artist. Um, right. Sometimes people get the impression that um, it's something separate and distinct to reggae, right. which is very fine. Maybe we, we have a problem where you identify or you isolate it.
from reggae itself. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, I've always said on the program, you hear um, gentlemen from, from Germany. Mm -hmm. um, those guys enter the market as reggae artists. That's it. Um, and obviously, once a fan takes to the music, you then investigate and you follow an artist and you become like, hey, this guy's from Germany. Yes. But they don't always use it um, and put it up front and say, well, I'm a German reggae artist. Right. Um, so what, what's your view on that? Are you, are you Tabitha, a Bajan reggae artist, or are you Tabitha, the reggae sister, full stop? Tabitha, the reggae artists? sister, full stop. Because funny enough, you mentioned Germany. I was born in Germany, mm -hmm. but um, and to a German mother. My mother is German as well. Mm -hmm. And she moved here. But I've lived in Barbados all my life. Right. Um, I would not say I am a Barbadian reggae artist because I'm an artist first and foremost. Right. So it doesn't matter where I'm from. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. This is my craft. This is how I represent myself. So, Tabitha, your reggae sister. Simple, friendly, straight to the point. But you get what it is at the end of the day, you know? I saw Madeline and people business, though. I tell you, they, they like met. I ain't telling you who it is because you're too malicious. I can, I you know, I don't know if I want to call you because I don't want it to turn out that you turn out to be cheesy or, you know, I don't really know you, man. He bites that kids from me and thing, and he got manners and he's one of the people that don't park and block it, you drive away and thing, so I like you, you know? I don't know if I can call you, though. I read a song about you, though. It's not that serious, alright? It's not that serious. He's an artist, too. Do not go on YouTube. I, I go on, man. I can, all right, all right, go on. I, I ain't talk to you later. Right, we let love rise and let all hate be scattered about. Super France and Rebel Glam. Love is the plan. Man and woman. Hey. Be so sweet and I'll be mine. Oh no, I am a woman that completes. So take your time. Take your time. I got the loving that you need to change your life. And just so blessed, I offer you loving divine. So I say, Hey, brother man, I need you to come over and be with. Plans for you. Hey, brother man, I need you to come over you, baby, and be baby. with me. I got plans for you. Did you hear that? Who man have been dream? What a happy days. Colorful love, me no in a good fade. You be me not a child like me, they in a parade. Me love the way you move, me love the way you operate. Not to express me, say, tell you clean and straight. Ten years and now we love each other the same way. Feel I'm a sweet at all when we old and gray. I tell you, baby girl, I say this up in a good fade, yeah. Hey, brother man, I need you to come over and be with me. I got plans for you. I thought you Not afraid to tell you the truth. I wanna know your roots and taste the fruits. It's important to me that we keep it true. So I'm waiting for you to tell me what you wanna do. Oh, some men just waste women time and energy, but not you, cause I'm sure that you're the one for me. You're the one that stays etched in my memory. You and me is just power and synergy. Hey, brother man, I need you to come over and be. Hey, brother man, I need you to come over you, and be with me. I got plans for you. If you want me come, I will come there. Me and you together sitting in a one chair. See, no other love like this, baby 
girl I say them could never compare I know love is a sweet something Earth angel I say you are me queen I'm begging you run go tell your mommy and your daddy super I'm not Only five feelings yeah. Hey brother man I need you to come over and be with me I got plans for you I thought you is it Hey brother man, I need you to come over you, baby, and be with me. I got plans for you. Did you hear that? I'm gonna suck you down for life. <laughs> you wanna love black people? I'm gonna say you don't provide us last year, the Almighty. Yeah. Zone Street, number 34. I want to say um, much thanks to Dario from the Empire Boutique for having us here. Um, and also the other sponsors who have come on board to really make the program possible um, coming into the, to the end of this year. Um, like I told you before, we're here. Nikolai Charles of Exodus Roots. We have Tabitha, um, reggae artist here in Barbados. Um, we obviously would have been talking, obviously, an, an introduction um, into you know what both of you guys are dealing with. Um, on a spiritual level, no. Obviously, you mentioned to me just now. You grew up in a Rastafari home. Um, so I want you to, again, though, just go into that for me, because obviously we're in Barbados, we're in the region. Um, this is not Jamaica where Rastafari obviously would have, would have been birthed and the concept of Rastafari and so on. Um, so in Barbados, you find that obviously there is, you know, Christianity, Anglican, um, spiritual Baptist, there's Pentecostal or whatever. But the main crux of it is obviously um, this is labeled as a Christian society. Right. Um, so what was it for you growing up? Um, as a Rastafarian going, you told me you went to Lawrence Tigre. Yes. Um, so talk to me about your experience. Um, well, I grew up like, I guess, a normal kid mm -hmm. for the most part. Um, you know, a lot of running around, spending time in nature, stuff like that. But um, in school, things were a little bit difficult for me at first. And I guess at a, at a young age, when you're in primary school, you're not fully aware of yourself, right. per se. Um, so I had difficulties where children probably didn't understand having here my life. Mm. They didn't understand me having mm. lots. They didn't understand me having the complexion that I had. Because mm. given that I ha um, or what you would call mixed, so to speak, mm white mother, black father, and they, it was, they could not identify with what I was. Uh. And so it was always difficult for some children, you know, some, I remember one evening for sure, I went home crying because I had chewing gum in my hair. Somebody had stuck chewing gum in my hair, Whoa. in my locks, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you got locks, so you know how difficult yeah, it is gonna be mm -hmm. to get chewing gum out of your locks. Uh. Subsequently, I lost a lock <laughs> because I frantically tried to remove it and in so doing, I spread it <laughs> throughout the entire lock. I'm gonna suck you down for life. <laughs> you wanna love black people. I'm gonna say you're the provider for us, you're the almighty. That said, you've grown. That was primary school. Mm -hmm. um, as you've grown, what, what have you found um, Rastafari to be? Um, that's always been a buzzword here in Catch a Fair because obviously um, when you have locks, some people will assume that you're Rasta. It doesn't mean that you're Rasta. Um, so what does Rastafari mean for you? For me, it's a way of life. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of being. Mm -hmm. um, from when I was young, it was always instilled in me. My mom, I always remember it. Live clean and let your works be seen. That my mother will always tell me that. And it's the way you eat, the way you live, the way you interact with people. Mm -hmm. You know, being your brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with a good set of morals and values based upon being birthed into a Rastafarian family. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it, it's not that case with other religions, but for me, that's what, right. you know, being a, Rast a Rasta is. And um, yeah, it, I just carried that 
all through my life. Live clean and let your works be seen. I like that. Yeah. Um, Nikolai, um, obviously the tone of your work, um, it doesn't only speak to Rastafari in terms of the colors and the symbolism and so on. Um, it more speaks for me. Um, when I look at your work, I see a broader sense looking at, um, I would say, ancient spirituality as far as Africa and Kemet are concerned. Um, again, with some of the symbolism um, in the shape of, of some of your work, you have the pyramids, um, you have the shape of Africa down your shirt. Um, so spirituality versus religion. Like I said, we'll be trying to really continue and stay on that path um, as far as talking about personal development um, in all of these programs. So from your perspective, um, where do you stand as far as spirituality and religion are concerned? Great. Um, I guess for me, my, my view on it is your spirituality, you know, is something that you choose. Um, you can do things religiously over and over um that for me goes more or leans more with religion um however the reason i'm here on this this rock called barbados is because of what had happened in the past where my great 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 grandfathers grandmothers you know came here some probably got knocked off the ship right and they told us to to adhere to to this religion mm -hmm. that is that is documented okay. right um however that was their form of of religion mm -hmm. and that was the route to what's going on today because you know we have probably a million churches in barbados right. mm -hmm. you know um next to a church is a cemetery a rum shop you know what i mean because this, the and then the school, mm -hmm. right? So if you tra trace the route to what, what was happening in the past, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, it's, it's developed in today where you have, you know, sex in, in churches and stuff. Mm -hmm. However, I grew up in a Christian home, you know what I mean? Like, like um, most the average like Barbadians. Most, yeah, yeah, most Barbadians, you know, but I believe, you know, you got to be true to yourself. Um, that's what caused me to to really push the brand and, and push these messages because right. I was always Afrocentric, right. you know. But doing certain research, um, you know, finding certain things like you know where the information comes from, you know, like the Bible. You read the Bible and stuff. Um, this this information. Is Africa, right? Um, Africa is in my blood. You know, it, it doesn't make sense for me to to deny it. You know, um, once this thing in your skin called melanin, mm -hmm. you know, is in in your body, that is your root, Africa. Right. You know, what I mean, no matter which part of the world you are, right? So, I guess. You know, that is it for me, for spirituality, being true to yourself. All right. Um, Tabitha, um, mm -hmm. part of the, the, like he's identifying, obviously, is um, where we're talking about education being tied to religion, that is the colonial past right. um, of Barbados or whatever. Um, so I always want to be careful on the program to, you know, guide people accordingly, especially young people who may be watching the program, who may be caught in a valley of indecision. Um, you know, in the hunt for information, um, they're not sure. Um, so I want you to speak to young people for me. Um, some person who grew up in a Rastafari home, who's, you know, aware of self or whatever the case is. Um, how do you guide some person who's, they're young, they're going to school, they're in an age where they're distracted by so many things. Um, so in layman terms, I mean, without trying to shove too much information down the mind of a youth, um, let's say we want to re-educate them to, to more Afrocentric views or whatever. Um, how do we go about doing that? How important is it? Would, would that would that make a difference? Would that change behavioral patterns in society if we do that? I think the key to it all is to be, like you said, educated mm -hmm. on certain issues. And in order to do that, I think a lot of research is required. Mm -hmm. And with that re research will then come the understanding of self, because then you can apply yourself to certain things and you say, you know what, well, this seems a lot like me, you know, and then you feel 
comfortable knowing, well, I have this information and now I can make a decision based on what I know, not what I've heard or what I've been forced into. So I would say research is key. Education is key. Education is definitely key. And Selassie was big on education, on the arts, drama, you know, everything. He was, he attended numerous plays in his villages. You know, he would just pop up and go and watch a play in the village or, you know, he was really, really instrumental when it came to education. parental perspective because realistically every parent has to go to work so we need we really do need the public education system because everybody can't afford let's say a private school or to home school or whatever the case right. is so you have the public education system um where do parents come in to, to take control after the bell rings at three o'clock at school um to bring that child into an environment where um 
you know, they're being re-educated gradually. You know, although we appreciate what the public schools are doing because all of us have come through the public education system. So it still really relies on you, the individual and the, and the whole parental structure. But what advice can you give them from a parental perspective? Um, I know you have your daughter. Um, mm -hmm. To keep them grounded from within the home, because that's where it starts. We can't right. obviously put blame or cast blame on right. government or whoever. It's right. still our responsibility solely. So what advice can you give from, from a parent perspective? I would say as a parent, the, the most important thing is to pay attention mm -hmm. and to give your child, equip your child with what you know they will need for the world. Mm -hmm. So the morals and the values, you know, what we would have had back in the day, which is seriously lacking now. Right. Um, something as simple as monitoring what your child is watching, right. their intake, you know, Social media can be good and it can be bad, mm -hmm. depending on how you use it. Right. I think we need to pay a bit more attention to what our children are doing after hours. Right. And, you know, like I said, what they're watching, you know, what can they learn from certain things? What can you teach them, right. you know, that they cannot learn from certain scenarios in, in these cartoons? And, you know, I think one-on-one -on -one time is important with children and to take your time to, to show them, yes, I care and I love you and to discuss certain issues as well because mm -hmm. it, it all goes hand in hand, right. you know, like issues pertaining to whether it be sex or pregnancy or, mm -hmm. you know, just different issues that are so taboo that we, we're like, ha ha, we don't talk about that mm -hmm. and, you know, certain things like that, like. So you, you we face, need you to face take, it head on and you actually make them Correct. More, more like we need to get hands on with our children and explain what certain things are. Mm -hmm. And not, oh, go and watch TV and see if you find it out there or go and, and leave them to go to, and, to and see, really you know? Mystery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's your take, Nicolai, um, on the whole, because you mentioned just now, you really made a, a valid point that the churches, the schools, everything is pretty much tied together. And these are all things that have extended from our colonial past in, in probably every part of the region. Um, in America, wherever slavery existed, obviously, these are the things that have been, you know, left. That's all they pretty much gave us. Mm -hmm. um, the schools, the education system, the religious structure, etc. Um, the financial structure, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what's your take on education? Going to that a little further for me. Is that really an answer? Or can that solve um, some of the problems at a, at a root level here in society right now? Yeah, I believe yeah, education is important. Um, what you educate the youth is very important. Um, Obviously, you send the children to school and, you know, they hear certain things at school, um, get influenced by certain things in their environment. But, you know, I don't have any children, but as a parent, I believe, you know, you should really hit home mm -hmm. with certain principles, you know, for, you, for your youths to really stand by and, and uphold. Um, a parent has to grow too, so as a child, right? Um, I find there's a lot of young parents about and they, you know, carry a certain mentality. They're not growing, right? They're not growing as a parent, right? So obviously the youths now would see certain things and, and then, you know, choose various paths, right? So we, who have children, you know, have to really hit home our story and not his story. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. And right. that, that, that's a good space for a brief. Um, we're going to come back and obviously initially we wanted to, to really dive into crime and violence, but I cannot deny um, the conversation a natural flaw um, that takes us to the root. Education really and truly is, is very, very important. And that being one of the, the main things that we need to correct and reverse um, if you want to see a change in behavior among youth in the society. So when we come back, don't forget we're here at Empire Boutique, number 34, Swan Street. When we come back, um, we're going to talk a bit more about War, Tabitha. That's her last song. I really want to get behind what inspired that song from her. Um, crime and violence. That's a buzzword in society right now. So we're going to talk to the youth um, about that behavior when we come back. Um, too many of our brothers and sisters being shot down uh, pretty much on a daily basis right now. Um, the headlines every day. Um, it's bloodshed, you know, so we need to talk about that. We need to come back and catch up. I am gonna say give thanks for life. <laughs> you want to let black people. I'm gonna say, you're the prayer of the slash, you're the almighty. Oh, no, 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 come for me, God. 
crown When they dress them look sweet now How come now you not come from the corner Get to use them as suffer what I want now How come you not out of every suffer and not feel the pain Get to you can hustle to the sun and the rain They must be gonna laugh and think we insane Who they not come from the house is key now man When the Santa Claus has come from the corner But they never ever come to set trends now Policeman and beat me up and search we are not a rat now They so make them friends them alarm now Hey Mr. Minister, Minister In now your suit and your collar How come now you not come from me Ghana? Me hear you say you know everything but one now Just if you call him a Minister, Minister When the dress him look sweet now How come now you not come from me Ghana? Me hear you say you know everything but one now Everything but one now 7 o'clock p.m. me turn on me TV Politician, but them not see me. Listen, what I run over them, they tell me. I'm a poor people passing the wharf, it smell me. Me want you around the elderly and sickly. Got things for your target, can never trick me. The real you trick me, it really big way. But this system designed to punch and lick me. So some baby running in, politician running out. Me don't know, say, why they falling and why they running back? This is only the two that we meet at them, bro. Got poor people running around. Me a burn on a steam, Minister of Finance. Hey, you are with me, me. Minister of Tourism. Me got no open. I'm gonna say, give thanks for life. <laughs> you are a lot of people. I'm gonna say, you're the prayer. This last year, the Almighty. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we're gonna wind down shortly. Like I told you again, um, Nicolai Charles, Exodus Hooks, where um, conscious brand on the market right now in Barbados and across the diaspora. Tabitha, your reggae sister. Um, that song "War" is what actually made me invite you onto the program um, for our restart. Yeah, um, it really um, tugged at the heartstrings. So, just give us a little piece of that song. Um, let our viewers actually hear some of the lyrics in that song, so they so they see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, I wrote this based upon various is issues. Mm -hmm. So we got three days, six murders. Tell me why you take a life and left him in the gutter. What this senseless killing for? Time so hard already, everything they're billing for. Why make it complicated? You should be loving all the time, but yet you practice hatred. War is so overrated. Why can't we all unite and get this thing right? So we don't want a more war. War, all the shooting and the killing, what are we fighting for? We don't want a more war. War, all the shooting and the killing, what are we fighting for? Why are you bitter? You should do better. Try to turn your life around and just put the gun down. Why are you bitter? You should do better. Yeah, man. Yeah. War. I like that song. Mm -hmm. You need to check it out. You can find Tabitha on Facebook or you can find that song uh, on SoundCloud. Um, um, so on Ragamuffin, Ragamuffin Entertainment. Right. For sure, for sure. On YouTube and on SoundCloud. Ragamuffin Entertainment. Okay. I think that's a song fitting for the times. Um, Nikolai, you're a Barbadian. You're a Bajan. I think that gives you enough right to speak to the, to the issue of crime and violence that's going on, that's plaguing the society right now. What are your views on it? Uh, quickly, how do, how do you really feel about the gun violence that's going on? Right. Um, I believe everybody, you know, should blast that song. That Tabitha <laughs> sure. just, just, just sang there just now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but, you know, we look at what's going on in society today, you know, the economic crisis and stuff um you know you have people leaning towards hustling then you have the other other set leaning towards you know the crime um you know really looking the mirror look at yourself you know um look to get inspiration from from people that are doing good things you know in the world not only barbados um you know do your reading do some research um see see what race see what what set of people um you come from um and you know put down the guns man is is getting really really cruel out there man um you just don't want to go go about hurting innocent people mm -hmm. you know you got because time you know you got time on your hands and time is not to be wasted you know what i mean do some positive stuff. Okay. Yeah. Right in your corner. Right. Okay. So you just heard it from two two young entrepreneurs. Um, one, Tabitha, she's a musician. We have Nikolai, he's a designer. 
Um, so we're really encouraging, obviously, people across Barbados, across the region, to really adopt uh, a new attitude of consciousness. Um, I don't know. The gun violence, really and truly, we, that's something we're going to be talking about for a while on every program because um, as we meet people, obviously, that's going to be a concern for them. Um, so we're going to try and at least let each person have the opportunity to speak to the youth and at least share some guidance, share some positive word um, to at least lend some help to that situation. So I want to thank you both for coming on the program. Um, I'm encouraging my viewers to stay tuned. Find them on social media that you can actually support the work. I think that's the best way that we can help each other out economically as well because the Indians and the Chinese and all these other races, they have to act together as far as economics is concerned. You know, um, commodities, whatever it is they're doing, um, you can see that they seriously try to pull the resources together and, you know, keep things in a tight circle. You know, so at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong um, with black people, black Barbadians supporting um, a local product. And not just because it's local, you, you support it, um, but because obviously we know within ourselves that there's quality work across um, the island, um, whether it be carpentry, whatever you name it, music, fashion. Um, there's really a lot of quality here in Barbados that we can support. So neglect the bad mind, support your brother, support your sister. Um, and that's the restart for Catch a Fire so far. When we come back next week, um, we're going to be speaking to a doctor dealing with wellness, holistic medicine. That's something that's very important to um, health. Mm -hmm. um, so when we come back on the program next week, you're going to meet um, a good friend of mine, um, Dr. Haru. So make sure you stay tuned to the program. Big respect to Trident 10 TV. You can find that on Multi-Choice, Channel 116. Big respect to Paul Clark and the guys down there. So that's it right here from Empire Boutique, Swan Street, Catch a Fire. We're out. I'm gonna say you're the pro-Alice last year, the Almighty.